For thousands of years, China fiercely guarded the secret of tea's cultivation and manufacture. The British Empire sought to change that in 1848 by mounting one of the most audacious espionage missions ever undertaken to enter forbidden China and steal the secret of tea. The man they entrusted with this mission was a 36-year-old Scottish botanist. The net revenues from the China tea trade to the East India Company in 1800 exceeded those of its Indian empire, effectively. The East India Company had ruled over something like a quarter of world's trade and 20% of the population of the planet. That's like Microsoft, Coca-Cola, McDonald's and about 20 others rolled into one. I could hardly wait to communicate my findings. Medicinal teas are produced from tea trees of the same variety as other non-medicinal teas. And the quality of the tea depends upon the quality of the soil and climate where it is grown. If the seeds I had collected were grown successfully in our nurseries in the Himalayas, they would produce excellent teas. The risks I had taken travelling here incognito would have been fully rewarded. The East India Company authorised him to write a book of his travels in China. Fortune produced a romanticised account, deleting carefully all the details that could compromise his secret activities. By subtly demystifying the aura surrounding Chinese tea, Fortune also prepared British readers to the idea of drinking tea from other places. Britain abruptly stopped buying tea from China and halted the opium trade. The Chinese tea industry collapsed. Imperial Chinese rule, then in severe decline, had no means by which to react, and the nation's economy was devastated. Equally clouded in mystery is that the best of Indian tea is still produced from Chinese tea plants stolen by fortune.